Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers, happy Friday. This week has gone by fast, honey. I can't believe it's almost the weekend. Anyways, it's been a busy week. There's been a lot of stories that have made the headlines. So let's go ahead and dive on in. First and foremost, I was saddened yesterday when I learned about the passing of entertainment legend Jerry Springer. As you guys know, Jerry Springer was one of my favorite pastimes. I started watching him like in junior high all the way through high school, being a mom. I mean, I haven't watched the Jerry Springer show in a few years, but this was definitely a big staple in my high school years. Like, everybody, you know what I'm saying, those days that you didn't go to school, you watched Jerry Springer. Um, late at night, when he came on around 10 o'clock, we would stay up and watch Jerry Springer, then be tired the next day at school, child. But anyways, um, he passed at the age of 78, and basically they're saying that he passed from cancer, and he will definitely be missed. Um, he made a lot of people's childhoods. With that Ratchet Talk show and all of the drama, we were here for it. And on top of that, he was a big, you know, pop icon. I remember him hosting MTV Spring Break in 1999, and a lot of people really enjoyed it. So now in other news, what's even more crazy is that the same day that Jerry Springer died, that old bitch Car Carolyn Bryant, a.k.a. Carolyn Bryant Dunham, because she got remarried, she also passed yesterday. Now, if y'all don't know who she is, she is the lady who told her husband and his half-brother that 14-year-old Emmett Till whistled at her. And he was brutally murdered in Mississippi in 1955. His death, because Mammy Till decided to do an open casket and show the world what was done to her son, his death sparked the civil rights movement. So his death was very significant, especially in African-American history. Carolyn Bryant Dunham, the white woman who accused Emmett Till of making advances towards her, has died. 14-year-old Emmett Till was kidnapped and brutally murdered by Bryant's then-husband and his half-brother in Mississippi in 1955 over the allegation. The two men were acquitted in his killing by an all-white jury, but later confessed in an interview. The case gained national attention after Emmett Till's mother allowed Jet Magazine to take and publish photos of her son's mutilated body in an open casket. The horrific image shocked the nation and served as the catalyst for the civil rights movement. Years after Till's death, Dunham admitted to fabricating parts of her story, although she was never charged with a crime. And so for years, they have been trying to get this woman held accountable. Because if you guys remember about maybe six, seven, eight years ago, she came out and she admitted that Emmett Till did not whistle at her. Um, you know, she thought he did and things just kind of got out of control. And I made a video years ago dragging her, demanding that she be prosecuted. Now, last year, a lot of people came together in the Carolinas and they went to her nursing home and demanded that she be arrested. And a grand jury basically said she's too old. You know, this story, this happened a long time ago. She's already sick and they refused to indict her. But I I find it very interesting because when it comes to anything dealing with Nazi Germany, they do not care if you are on your deathbed. You could be on oxygen. I have seen Nazi guards literally on oxygen dying, handcuffed to the bed and taken off to prison. OK, they don't play that shit. If you had killed Jewish people during the whole Nazi era and they find out that you try to switch your identity and, you know, just be a regular person and they find out who you were back in Nazi Germany, you are arrested and tried and thrown in prison. They don't care if you're 90 years old or 105 years old. They're arresting you. So I, I was kind of offended when they refused to, you know, arrest her. But, but, you know, whatever. Less than a year later, she died at a nursing home in Louisiana. So good riddance to trash. Point blank, period. Emmett Till never really got justice. But it's okay because I believe that there is justice in the afterlife. And both her, her ex-husband, the brother, and all of the people who were involved in helping with this cover-up, they will definitely get their karma in the afterlife. 
So moving on to sports. If you guys do not know, WNBA star Brittany Grinner is once again going viral. She was interviewed yesterday and they asked her, how do you feel about transgender athletes? Because now a lot of states are thinking about banning transgender athletes from women's sports. If you guys don't know the case of Riley Gaines, she's been a very open person talking about this. Hi. Uh, my name is Riley Gaines. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Kentucky, where I was on the women's swim team. I proudly finished my career as a 12-time NCAA All-American, a five-time SEC champion. Um, I am one of the fastest 200 butterflyers uh, of all time. Um, but on March 17th of last year, my teammates and I were, and other female swimmers from universities around the country were forced to compete against a biological male named Leah Thomas. Um, Thomas was allowed to compete in the women's division after competing as a member of the University of Pennsylvania's men's swim team for three years. We watched on the side of the pool as Thomas won a national title in the 500 yard freestyle, beating out the most impressive and accomplished female athletes in the country, including Olympians and American record holders. Whereas just the year before, Thomas at best was ranking in the 400s in the men's category. The next day, Thomas and I raced in the 200 freestyle which ended up in a tie. Um, we went the exact same time. She was one of the best female swimmers and basically this shitty male swimmer um, who decided to just, you know, transition out the blue. He went by the name of Leah Thomas and basically was able to beat every female in women swimming and it really affected them like if you really go and you listen to her story it's really sad and they basically allowed him to win all of these awards just so it could look good for the public and you know it, it was so unfair because when he played with the men he was like number 400 once he got around the women this man is like six foot five he has long arms, everything. He was beating these women. And so she's been on a crusade to show that this is not okay. He didn't fully transition at the time. He was walking around the locker room naked. Um, it was a bunch of mess. So because she's now speaking as a former NCAA swimmer, um, so now basically what's going on is that a lot of states are thinking about banning transgender women from sports, especially ones who are just deciding to transition late in life. And so this is causing controversy. They want to know what Brittany thought about this, and this is what Brittany had to say. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Good morning, uh, Brittany. I'm uh, Bill Roden from ESPN and Skate. It's really great to see you. It's good to know the prayers have been answered. Uh, the question, um, you've always represented so much throughout your entire career about access and, you know, being able to do stuff. And I hate to put one more thing on your plate, but there, there are a number of states who are aggressively moving to prevent transgender athletes playing. And I was wondering, again, I'd hate to put one more thing on your plate, but in terms of your, on your radar, where is that? Um, you're going to have a tremendous platform, but where is that going to be on your radar in terms of advocating for um, you know, athletes, all athletes, transgender athletes, to be able to play? Oh, I mean, that, that ranks high on the on the list of, of things that I'll be fighting for and speaking up against. You know, everyone has everyone deserves the right to play. Everyone deserves the right to to come here, sit in these seats and feel safe and not feel um, like there's a threat or they can't be who they are or um, like like it's just all eyes on them. Uh, so um, I think it's a crime honestly, to to separate um, someone for any reason. Um, so I definitely will be speaking up against against those that legislation and those laws that are trying to be passed for sure. All right, so you guys just saw what she had to say, and she's basically saying that if transgender athletes are not allowed in sports, that it should be a crime. Now, this is very interesting, and it's really starting to make me wonder, one, her voice is super deep, um, but they say by all accounts she's a biological woman. But I just find it really interesting that she now wants men to be able to play in 
all these sports. So, Brittany, if you get your wish, understand why you're crying about pay inequality and how the WNBA doesn't pay women fairly. The reason why you guys don't get paid, quote unquote, fairly is because most people don't watch the WNBA. You guys lack in ticket sales. Nobody's going to pump more money into you than what you're worth. But what you're doing right now is co-signing your replacement because what's going to happen with the WNBA, ma'am, is that soon every guy who was not good enough to make it into the NBA they'll just decide out the blue well let me just go ahead and transition and become a woman and play in the WNBA and what's going to happen is that you will have more trans women in the WNBA than biological women then maybe more tickets will sell and maybe you know people will pay to see the shit show but you're co-signing your replacement what I also find interesting while she's saying that this should be a crime are we also going to see trans men the, I'm talking about women who want to be men. Are they now going to be allowed to go play in the NBA and in, and in men's sports? Because I don't see a lot of trans men running to play men's football, running to play men's basketball. So should a trans man who's all of five foot five be allowed to play in the NBA because she feels like a man? She feels like she's as tall as LeBron and she's as strong as LeBron. Should she be allowed to then play in the NBA because of how she feels? You know, this is a very, very slippery slope, and I I'm just disappointed. Um, you, Brittany, are an anomaly for a woman. You are six foot nine, okay? So because of those that, that blessed height that you were given, you know, you're able to play basketball. But guess what? The, a lot of men are really tall. I mean, you're taller than most men, but a lot of men are really tall. So now we're going to have a bunch of six foot two men you know what I'm saying? Now playing in the WNBA because they weren't tall enough to make it into the NBA. I mean, does she think that her strength is that of LeBron? I know somebody was like, oh, well, she wanted to play against DeMarcus Cousins or something like that. Okay, that's fine. But I said LeBron James. I don't see her beating LeBron James on his worst day. Men and women are just biologically different. Now, back when I was in high school, um, Serena Williams and, you know, Venus, you know, being cocky young black girls, they said that basically no man could beat them. They were that, you know, bad. They was just the baddest tennis players for women. And they came out and they claimed that no male players outside of the top 200 could beat them. Well, then a German man named Karsten Brosh, who ranked 203. Okay, so he wasn't even in the top 200. He was 203. He decided to play them. He beat Serena six to one and then disposed of Venus six to two. Both ladies said that they didn't know it would be that difficult. I played shots that would have been winners on the women's circuit. He got them very easily, said Serena. So this is proof. And Serena and Venus are some of the best best women's tennis players in the world that was at their peak they were killing it in women's tennis but even at their peak they were unable to beat a man and they had to eat a little bit of humble pie a lot of people don't know about that story like I said that was back in high school um they had to eat a little bit of humble pie and realize that as a woman even though you're buff Serena and you know you're built like a brick house your strength is not that of a man we are biologically different people men and women are not the same and that is okay so for Britney to co-sign this, I can't co-sign it. I don't agree. I think they should have a trans league for trans players. I think if trans women want to play basketball, have their own league. If they want to play football, have their own league. If trans men want to play hockey, have their own league. I don't think we should be mixing the sexes. I don't agree with that because at the end of the day, a man's strength, you were born biologically a male, will always be physically superior to that of a woman. Point blank, period. No pun intended. So now moving on to some lighthearted news. Rapper Blueface made waves once again on social media, honey, when he was interviewed about, you know, his love for Krishan. And he basically said that Krishan is not his soulmate. She is more of his cellmate. And he feels like he's in prison, you know, just dealing with her. It's just like a, it's just a horrible situation. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Would you say she's your soulmate? Hell no. <laughs> no. She's a fucking cellmate. That's what she is. We, lo we locked the fuck up. <laughs> He's so a cellmate. That's my cellmate. That's my cellie. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So, of course, once that went viral, people were definitely dragging him and telling him to shut the hell up because if she was that bad, why is she knocked up right now? 
I mean, he acts like all of this stuff. He's just oblivious to how pregnancy works and the fact that, you know, she's such a bad person and she's such a headache. I'm trying to figure out why she's having your baby right now. It doesn't make sense to me. So once again, Blueface is looking for attention. Hopefully, Krishan won't take it too personal because we know she's not going anywhere. Let's keep that real. Um, but we also don't want her stressed out during this pregnancy. So he needs to have several seats and a tall glass of what? Shut the fuck up. So now, last but not least, Tucker Carlson has finally broken his silence. If you guys remember, he was fired this past Monday from Fox News, and he decided to take to Twitter and do like a quick two-minute video, basically letting the world know that he will be back. This video on Twitter has like over 29 million views or something like that. Way more views than any host right now on Fox News, ironically enough. Check this out. Good evening, it's Tucker Carlson. One of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country, kind and decent people, people who really care about what's true, and a bunch of hilarious people also, a lot of those. It's gotta be the majority of the population, even now. So that's heartening. The other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television are. They're completely irrelevant. They mean nothing. In five years, we won't even remember that we had them. Trust me, as someone who's participated. And yet at the same time, and this is the amazing thing, the undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War, civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? It's been a long time. Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them, and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Suddenly, the United States looks very much like a one-party state. That's a depressing realization, but it's not permanent. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and so it won't. The people in charge know this. That's why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion. They're resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. See you soon. All right, so you guys just heard what Tucker Carlson had to say. So it's going to be very interesting to see where he goes from here, if he's just going to go independent, create his own podcast, you know, maybe have a show on Rumble, who knows. But trust and believe his audience is definitely waiting for him with bated breath. So on that note, you guys, thank you for taking time out to watch this video. Let me know what your favorite story was this week. How do you guys feel about Jerry Springer dying, Carolyn Bryant dying on the same day? What do you guys think about Britney? Her saying that trans women should be allowed to play in women's sports. How do y'all feel about Blueface and, you know, honey, his controversial comments, once again, towards his soon-to-be baby mama, and then last but not least, how do you guys feel about what Tucker Carlson had to say? So go ahead and leave a comment down below. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. I will talk to y'all later. Enjoy your weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.